Hello, this is a video about the QAMA calculator. Um, it's a calculator that I've had a little while now and I think could be a really interesting tool in science and maths education. I've had it just long enough to spill a bit of coffee on the top left corner there. But first I'd like to talk about some of the problems that uh, this calculator might help to solve. Let's imagine we've got a question which um, like this, calculate the cross-sectional area of a wire of diameter one centimeter. So quite a common question that could come up in AS physics. So a good student would draw a diagram first and they'd realize that the cross-sectional area that's wanted is this area on the end uh, and that shape is a circle. And so the shape that's wanted is a circle. The next thing that uh, they would do, of course, is they'd write down an equation, sum, answer and unit. So starting with the equation, area is pi r squared. In this case, the radius uh, is half the diameter, so the radius is 0.5 centimeters. And then they do their sum. And they write down their answer, hopefully, with a unit. So uh, let's see what a normal calculator would give us for this. So here's uh, my calculator. Uh, if I put in uh, pi times uh, 0.5 squared, it gives me this. Now, even some good students sometimes write down everything they can see on their calculator. Of course, at this point, hopefully they won't forget to write down the units. This is wrong, really, because we've only known this radius to one significant figure. So really, we should only be reporting the answer to one or two significant figures. So the right answer in this case, even with the calculation, might be just 0 0.79 or perhaps 0 0.8 centimetres squared. Even more modern calculators have what's called natural display. So uh, it was originally called textbook display. Now it's called natural display. Uh, so this is even worse. Let me show you why. So here, if I if I enter pi, I get a nice pi symbol. And then if I times 0 0.5 squared, it will actually give me a quarter pi. So some students might now write uh, the answer down as pi by 4 centimeters squared. This is even worse than the previous example, because at least in the previous example, we were only um, showing that we knew it to three, six, nine uh, significant figures, so one part in a billion. In this case, we're actually claiming that we know it to infinite accuracy, uh, which is even worse. So now let me show you the QAMA calculator. So if a student uses this calculator, the, the QAMA stands for Quantitative um, Approximate Mental cal Arithmetic. Uh, it's a regular scientific calculator when you get it out of the box, so it has all of the usual functions that you'd expect to find on a scientific calculator, except that you'll notice that when you switch it on, it has uh, an estimate area and a precise answer area. So if we type uh, the same calculation in, so let's try uh, pi times 0.5 squared, it won't give us the answer at first. It does tell us uh, what pi is, but it won't give us the answer at first. You can see it now has a little cursor that blinks right above the EST here. And we now have to enter a guess. So pi is almost 3. 0 0.5 squared is about a quarter. So 3 quarters is about 0 0.75. So let's guess that. And then, and only then, will it give us the precise answer. So it makes us think a little bit about using... Uh, our calculators. Now, I've got a friend who's a, a physics teacher, and he's got two of these calculators, and um, he's going to be using them when his daughters are old enough to need a calculator, and they're the only calculators that they're ever going to get. They're excellent calculators, uh, standard scientific calculators. The keys are a little bit clunky because they're made uh, pretty cheaply uh, by, um, as far as I can see, a couple of crazy Israeli guys who in California who have put quite a lot of effort into the algorithm or what is a reasonable estimate for different functions on uh, the calculator. I once had an experience where going out to 
uh, by a set of calculators for a class. And uh, the calculators were 650. So I went up to the, the till and I said, oh, how much is this calculator? And the guy at the till said, oh, it's 650. Um, and then I said, oh, well, I think I'm going to need um, more than that. So, so how much is a box with 10 calculators in it? Uh, and then he gets out his calculator and I thought, okay, this must be perhaps the 8.325% discount or something that uh, for educational purposes, you know, this week. Uh, and uh, then after a little bit, he starts sweating and, and, and says, so that's 65 pounds. Um, and this was uh, the moment when I realized I couldn't go wrong working in education because there's clearly a lot to do. Ever since then, I really wanted a calculator that if you type something simple like um, the calculation I've just talked about, so 6.5 times 10, it kind of freezes and it won't let you do that calculation. Um, and it says uh, this calculator will no longer operate until you take it to a mathematician and get some training and then that they will unlock it for you. Well, this is effectively what the QAMA calculator does, because if we uh, have a look at that uh, calculation on this, uh, so if I do, um, let me just reset it. If we do that calculation, 6.5 times 10, then it won't uh, let me actually get the answer. So if I say 6.5 times 10 is about 70, that's no good. Even if I say it's uh, 65.2, that's no good. I actually have to put in 65 before it gives me the right answer. So it doesn't allow you um, to be um, to be lazy. If we do a harder calculation, then it's a little bit easier to get to the answer. So if I do um, 21.3, let's say, times 8.7, then uh, this is a little bit more generous. So if I say that's just uh, 20 times 10 and I put in 200, that's probably good enough. Yep, there we are. We've got the exact answer now with a, a less good approximation to the right answer. So a really good tool for getting students to think about uh, the answers that they're getting on their calculators without just blindly accepting the answer that comes up.